day. My name is Ms. Tessie. I am the owner and teacher of Perfect Start Learning, an in-home preschool program here in California. Today we are going to be talking about integrating the um, children questions into your normal work day. What I mean by this is uh, questions that children ask you during circle time or during any parts of the day that you take those questions and you make new learning experiences for your children. Um, the great the ages that I am talking about is two through five. So I work with these two through five year olds and during circle time they ask me questions about whatever we're learning. For example, I use the curriculum Mother Goose Time. This is the teacher's guide. And this month, which is March, we are learning about at the pond. We're learning about animals, we're learning about fish, we are learning about birds. We're learning about everything that goes on at a pond. Bugs. I'm not a fan of bugs, but that's not my business. Well, that part is my business. Uh, um, but we're learning about, we learn about basically the function of the pond in our environment. And with that, that means that there are going to be lots of questions. So in order to field these questions, you need to be able to not only answer them during circle time, but it is important to create new projects and new experiences for them so they get the most out of what the theme is for the month. Uh, the reason that this is important is because they need to participate. Children always, this is not a concept that is only that can only be used in elementary, middle, and high school. At the preschool age and at the toddler age, children need to be uh, direct participants in their learning. If they don't have a connection to what they are learning, then you're going to have a harder time have, helping them to uh, relate with their learning back to themselves and what happens at home. Um, the re how you do this is that is through um, what a lot of the stuff that high schooler, elementary, middle school, and high schoolers do is stuff that we can actually do at the preschool level. And I think a lot of this is we we fail to come across when we are going to school for this age group. Internet searches. The, by this, I mean you have a computer or um, you use your TV and you connect them to it and you let them help search on the Internet for information on what they've asked. For example, we have ladybugs in our classroom. The children asked about the type of bugs that might be around a pond, that might be around um, farms, because they did have questions about farms. So in order for me to make their questions uh, real life and bring them out in a physical way, I have brought in a root view, a fish, and uh, ladybugs. So when we had our initial circle time at the beginning of the month to discuss the new theme, uh, we and and what we were what we were going to be learning for the month, they all had questions, and a lot of their questions centered on uh, fish and what fish eat and how they live and why they swim, and all of these things. So it made more sense for me to go out and make it a field trip and take them to gather a fish. So we have a fish that they named. The fish is named Fendlin. A lot of fishies. Again, I did not name this fish. This is the fish. This is the class fish. They named the fish. So Finland lot of fishies and it will now have someone to feed him every day. And we have a magnifying glass set up next to Finland's fishy tank so that they can look at Finland closely and maybe see the Finland scales, see how Finland's uh, fins grow. And she is a part of the classroom now that can actually be referred back to um, during other times of the month for the theme. You want to engage the children and ask them meaningful questions during the beginning of the month, but you want to make sure that you're answering their questions uh, spontaneously throughout the month. You, uh, when they ask you a question during the weekend, you can take a you can take a couple of minutes research, find documentaries. Amazon Prime is a very good good source of um, videos that are very, that are, that are um, directly related to whatever you're talking about. 
They have short videos that you can use. Some of them are set to music. Some of them are not set to music, but they have enough information and they're fast enough that the children will remain engaged. They also have Smithsonian Earth. Uh, I'm actually subscribed to that, and um, I use a lot of the videos on Smithsonian Earth for the children. Uh, we... Um, a couple of months ago, for one of the other themes, I um I actually winter winter in the woods. I I actually used a lot of the videos on uh, Smithsonian Earth from Amazon Prime for the children, and they just they loved it. It was light video. You got to see an up close video of the animal we were looking at, which led to other questions, which led to them wanting to know more about the different types of animals. Then um, we actually got to, I have lots of squirrels in my backyard, so it added to a discussion about why the squirrels may not be hibernating in this area. Learn, um, it led to them learning about the area that we lived in and how winter is different in different areas. It, it opens up a whole new world. Um, when you add in when you add in the physical aspects of their questions into the learning, it makes it makes their worldview bigger. A lot of people say that it is hard to introduce abstract concepts to children, and so they just say, "Don't do it. Don't do it. It'll make them confused." That is not true. When you introduce abstract concepts to children, uh, I, you could technically say, since we don't live near a pond, that the pond and what grows in it and what lives in it, it could be an abstract concept to them. They've never been, they may have never seen a pond. They have never, they may have never seen um, algae or any of the plants that have lived or a lily pad. They may have never seen any of these things. My job as a teacher is to introduce these things to them so that they know what to look for. They know what to ask about. Uh, what, by introducing abstract concepts to children, you are opening up their eyes to the world outside of their community, outside of their family, and you are introducing them to 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 bigger concepts, which means that they'll have bigger questions. And in, in that, um, they'll be able to ask you more questions and become very, very involved in the learning process. So the, um, the root viewer, my late, my ladybugs, the Finland lot of fishies. She has been introduced to the classroom. All of these things that I've introduced to the classroom are all questions that all stemmed from questions that were asked about the theme during over the course of circle time. Don't use circle time just to relay information. Make sure you're using circle time as a time to reflect. Having a morning and an afternoon for circle time is really good for this. Use it as a time to reflect and ask questions and have them ask you questions. You want to make sure that while you're engaging the children, you're giving them a um, two-way street. They have a chance to ask you the questions that they want to know. And sometimes the questions may not be really to the pond. Sometimes they'll ask you the question about, um, this was a question I had, if, it, if there are no lily pads on the pond to, sh to um, shade the fish, will the sun cause the, pond, the fish to boil? This was a real question and it was a little bit scary because nobody wants to think about a pond with boiling fish in it. But this was a real question and he, he came up with it all on his own, and I was very excited because we could go over other things that might keep ponds cool, why um, why the sun may not boil a fish, how hot the sun may have to get for the fish to boil, how hot it would have to get outside for a pond to get super hot, um, the, the habitat, how the habitat may become uh, unlivable for animals if certain things are introduced, it opened up a whole wide world of things and they'll ask the, and they want to know these things. So um, making sure that you are, are a good facilitator and that you introduce these things to the classroom and bring in physical evidence of what you're learning about is very key to a, to a successful preschool classroom. 
Um, if you have any questions or ideas for me, please leave me uh, comments, and I will be posting pictures and and um, of my classroom with our animal with the root viewer, and I will post links of where to get a root viewer and a ladybug garden, and um, all of the things that I had in classroom. If you would like to try out a fish, I would suggest a beta fish because they are not. They don't require as much as other as some other types of fish, and they are very they're very easy to uh, take care of in a classroom when you're already dealing with a, um, a lot of children. I also got a tank with a closed lid, so we don't have to worry about someone acts um, trying to throw things into the fish tank. I've actually had that happen, but that was my own children, so we won't get into that. Not exactly sure why they decided to do that. And you don't end with a closed lid. You don't have to worry about them trying to go fishing, which is why I'm kind of scared to introduce that, but we're going to. So thank you for watching. I look forward to doing another video blog again uh, uh, by next week. And bye. Remember, learning is messy.